Welcome to Direct Talk, interviews with leaders, visionaries, and pioneers who are shaping Asia and the rest of the world. Our guest today is Hiroshi Ogasawara. He is the president of Yaskawa Electric, a company that makes industrial robots for manufacturers. Ogasawara's products have supported the automation of some of Japan's biggest companies, leading to their technological advancement as well as growth. Yaskawa Electric is among the highest selling makers of industrial robots in the world. And today, about 70% of its revenue comes from outside Japan. We asked Ogasawara about the future of robotics. With our products, we make it a point to always aim to be either the world's best or the world's first. We don't necessarily want to be number one at creating something that a million other people in the world are working on. It could be something just five people are working on, as long as we're number one. If you do that, then you have more potential to expand. That's what we think. We refine our technology and then strive to be number one or the world's first. That's what we've always strived to do since our company's founding. In 2017, the company began selling an industrial robot the world had never seen before. This is that robot. The industrial robots used to build cars and large electric appliances are generally about two meters tall and weigh close to 200 kilograms. In contrast, this model is 40 centimeters tall and it weighs just seven kilograms, light enough to carry. If we wanted our robots to be used by manufacturers making small parts, unlike cars, we needed a small robot. I believe it's the world's smallest and probably the fastest. A robot that's very small, but also very fast. Here's a demonstration of seven of these compact robots assembling miniature cars. They attach the tires, put together the body, and so on. Each robot has its own role, and they do that role efficiently. And because they're so small, it allows for assembly lines that take up much less floor space than usual. These compact robots generated buzz soon after they were announced. They are already at work in factories producing smartphones and semiconductors. When you're developing something new, batting 300 would be considered really good. A 30% success rate? I don't think ours is that high. I was in R&D for a long time. And looking back, I often think, why exactly did we make this thing? We'll often think, oh man, this is going to sell, and then we don't sell a single one. So you move on to the next thing. If you understand why it didn't sell, get rid of that factor, and then go and make the next thing. Think constructively. Yasukawa Electric was founded in Kita Kyushu, a city in Fukuoka Prefecture. Kita Kyushu is located about 850 kilometers southwest of Tokyo. The company got its start about 100 years ago, manufacturing motors used for work in coal mines. In those days, Coal was the primary fuel of industry. As mines were opened up across Japan, the company grew. You had to lift the coal out. You had to move it. And so you had motors to do this, right? Our company started as Japan was shifting from importing these motors to producing them domestically. With mines, you lift the coal out and move it. The motors have to keep turning. Around 1958, we developed the Minertia motor. It was a motor you could stop. A motor wants to rotate. Stopping it is difficult. We thought we'd make a stopping motor, and we did. We didn't think about how to use it until after. At least that's what I hear. 
We wanted to be the best in the world, and that's why we came up with this idea. At that time, most industrial machines were controlled by hydraulic systems that used oil. The company's new motor was electric and could stop its rotation on a dime, meaning the machines it controlled could stop on a dime as well. Machines could operate more precisely than ever. This technology was actually the starting point for industrial robots. We switched to electricity to make up for the limits of hydraulics. Machines had been moved by oil pressure, but you can't stop precisely that way. As you know, it's a liquid, which means it doesn't come to a stop like that. And this sort of precise stopping motor made robots possible. The technology behind Yasukawa's motor paved the way for industrial robots. The company itself released its first industrial robot in 1977. At the time, robots were primarily used for tasks of brute force, like moving heavy objects. Yasukawa's robots, on the other hand, were meant to perform delicate operations, such as welding, that would normally be done by people. To this day, the company's robots use these motors to operate. By offering extremely precise control, they allow for the execution of a wide range of tasks. First was the automotive industry namely robots that weld car frames. Even now, that's the main industry we make robots for. For welding, and now for painting, and also the handling of parts. The robots pick up parts and move them. About 60% of the world's industrial robots are used to make cars. In Japan's post-war era of rapid economic expansion, Yasukawa supplied the booming automobile industry with many robots. This became the new focus for the company, which grew rapidly. It developed a range of robots that drove automation in various industries. In the 2000s, it also began making humanoid robots. This robot can handle bacteria or dangerous drugs so a person doesn't have to. It's proved useful in pharmaceutical R&D. Robots can do work that would be dangerous or unsanitary for humans. Standing in for people is the basic function of an industrial robot. You don't find many robots in pretty places. They can do the things people don't want to do. Inhuman things, like repeating the same simple task. They'll be doing more of that work from now on. Yasukawa Electric entered international markets early, beginning with the U.S. in 1967. Now it has offices in Europe, South America, and Asia, 29 countries in all. In recent years, the country with the biggest growing market for industrial robots is China. The Chinese market right now, whether it's robots or factory automation, is just exploding. You can't really sense that here in Japan, but it's growing at an incredible rate. One reason is China's one-child policy. Because of that policy, most children are getting a higher education, and most of these people don't want to work on a factory floor. So they have a serious labor shortage, worse than Japan. Production is growing, but the workers aren't there. That's China today. And the cost of labor is going up. And as labor costs go up, the machines become the cheaper option. By 2020, China is expected to account for roughly 40% of the global market for industrial robots. There might be ups and downs, but it will continue to grow, for sure. The reason is simple. China has so many people, 10 times as many as Japan. And in terms of production, they're producing three to five times as much. 
If we think we're going to sell 10 of something in Japan, in China, we have to be ready to make 30, or we're going to be off. And everything we make in China will be used in China. We're not really thinking about shipping overseas. The demand in China is growing, so we're building factories there. Just now, this year, we're opening two factories to meet demand. We're making robots in China. In 2016, the company launched another new initiative in China. A joint venture with a world-class Chinese appliance maker. The partnership draws on that company's strong presence in the Chinese market. This device is used for medical treatment and caregiving. Yasukawa has been producing machines for use in healthcare for the Japanese market since 2002. So why is it now making these machines together with an appliance maker? They mainly make appliances, so the way they think about the cost of parts, about safety, about all sorts of things, is different from the industrial sector. We've learned so much from them. Compared to the industrial sector, in healthcare, for instance, very often you want to make the machines as light as possible, as small as possible. That's one thing. Another thing is consumption of electricity. If you plug in the machine to the outlet and flip the switch and you trip the circuit breaker, that's no good. In industry, even if you consume a lot of electricity, it's better to have plenty of power. But with healthcare equipment, it runs on batteries or you have to plug it into a home outlet. So using the knowledge of this appliance maker is very important. We've learned a lot. Looking to the future, Yasukawa Electric is working on developing a new class of robots. Ones equipped with artificial intelligence. This robot here is picking up an object, then moving it. A conventional robot would simply do what it is programmed to do, pick up the object, then move it. Using this camera, which acts as its eyes, the robot AI can recognize the size and shape of different objects. And it can do its work autonomously. Robots today do what you tell them, and they do the same thing every time. That's the benefit they provide. If you put a certain object in a certain place, they'll pick it up. But what if you have a lot of different objects? Humans can pick them up. Why? Because we look, we touch, decide how strong we need to grip. Robots don't have those functions, so they can't pick the object up. Right now, we're working on giving robots that functionality. Robots have trouble doing the simplest human tasks. The best kind of robot would be able to look and then decide what it should do. The only way forward is with gusto. That's only part of it, actually. Really, it's the only way forward is with passion and gusto. That's my motto, something I always say. It's what I say to our employees now. Retreat is not an option. Always move forward. And do it with gusto. You can't be miserable. Forward with gusto is the only way. That's how I feel, and that's how I approach things. There are people who say you should stop and take a step back sometimes. But not for us. Always forward. Right.